Hi, my name's John and welcome to Ask John D. Jones. In today's episode, we're going to do something fairly exciting and that is install the EpiServer sample site, otherwise known as the Foundation SPA. Now, the Foundation SPA came out in mid-2020, uh, around June time. It's EpiServer's sort of first sample site that uses React with EpiServer. It uses the content delivery API. The architecture is pretty cool, slightly different. Um, maybe traditionally would have one web app, now there's two. One to host the headless EpiServe CMS, another one to host the application. Another slight difference in this installation process is we won't be doing it via NuGet. Instead, we'll be using GitHub and cloning it. So to install the uh, repo, what you need to do is just go to EpiServer Foundation SPA. In here, you'll be able to see the GitHub account. Um, installing it is just a simple clone. So we'll get the package name. If we go over here, as you can see, I tried to do it earlier. So while this installs, let's quickly go through the README, um, see what we need. So obviously, you need some prereqs. It's uh, still a .NET application, so you'll still need Visual Studio to compile it. You'll need SQL Server. In this, we'll actually be using a proper SQL Server rather than local DB, which something like the Music Festival website uses. We'll be using Node, and we'll also be using IIS. Now, I'm assuming that you're going to have things like Node and IIS installed correctly. Um, I won't go through it in this video. If you really want to, um, I've detailed some of these things in other videos. So if you go to my YouTube channel and have a look at how to install um, EpiServer for developers or how to install the Music Festival website, you can basically get some of these hints, hints and tips from there. So just to prove it, I have a Node version installed. It's version 12. Now, as part of the pre-SAP stuff, um, again, I'm going to assume you've all got a SQL Server and IS configured correctly. The thing that we need to actually kick off is this thing called setup.bat. So I will run that through quickly. So if I just cd into the foundation sites, and then I should be able to do setup. So let's enter a name. This is the thing which is going to appear in IIS. So what we'll do is just call it like EpiSPA. Um, I don't really care about your public domain address because we're just creating a um, sample site. Again, because we're creating a sample site, we don't really, we're not too fussed about the public domains or the host names. Uh, license file is you can create your own EpiServer development um, license through the license center. We won't be doing it in this video, we'll just sort of try and crack on. The SQL instance server is important, so what you will need to do is put your SQL instance name in. Uh, mine is this. Also, as per the install instructions, it's good though just to say that you can log in. Uh, so let's just do a quick paste. My SQL command. Now, I found that the installer flakes a little. We'll try and install it and see what happens. But um, we're going to try and store it with SQL just as is and give it a go. Now, the install script takes about five minutes to run through. It does some um, pretty complicated things like calling Node. Obviously, Node generally has thousands and thousands of files that it needs to download. So that's half the reason why it takes a long time. Now, if you go into the setup file, you'll see exactly what it's doing. So in here, we can see that it's doing some database stuff. Um, it's setting some server permissions. It's also creating an entry within IIS for you for both the headless EpiServer CMS part and the SPA part. Now, while this is installing, I'll quickly talk about some of the things you may need to consider when you're using EpiServer and building an EpiServer website. Now, with React, a lot of the power is going to be now in your hands. So traditionally, you could use some of the helpers like Property4, and you'd use them within your Razor views. And through Property4, you may never realized it, but special attributes were outputted when um, things like edit mode or preview mode were enabled. And this is how the inline editing works. Again, when you're using um, just the preview within the CMS, you could create a preview controller, and a lot of the work would be handled for you. Now, when you're using an SPA, a lot of the power 
basically is in your hands, so it's up to you to develop some of this functionality. When you're creating your React application, you're probably going to be using something like Axios, and when you're using Axios, you're going to be talking back to one of the EpiServer APIs. Now, if I just quickly get up this article, um, yeah, if you just do a quick Google my name, EpiServer Content Delivery API, it will be linked to you in the comments. What you'll see is, uh, aside from how to set it all up, is we have these APIs, um, one which is called you know, V2 Content, and basically we'll be using these APIs um, within your React application to talk back to EpiServer and get information about the content, the pages, the blocks. And obviously, if you're in production mode, you'll want to see one set of data. If you're in preview mode, you'll probably likely want to see a very another set of data. So if we quickly check back on the installer, what we can see is we've uh, got everything installed. Now luckily this went through okay. Um, I've installed the sample site a few times and sometimes it's gone okay, sometimes it hasn't. Now the main reasons why it hasn't gone okay is through the SQL install. So if you look in your setup file again, um, the way that I've generally seen to get over this is by hacking these um, setups file a little bit. So as you can see in here, we've got uh, like the passwords being hard coded, and we've also got some. Um, based on that, we can then online 155. I think we have this SQL command now. Now, if you're having problems installing or talking to your SQL server, what I recommend is you probably update the script. Now. This is a script that I created a little bit earlier, and in here you can see that what I've done is basically I've changed the database name, I've changed the user to my new database user, um, I've also changed the password, and if you look up here, I've then um, got my SQL Server as my SQL Server, I've hard coded it, and in my line 155, I've actually typed the SQL command that I want it to run, and I've actually tested this out. So if you have any problems with SQL, I sort of recommend that you come in here and maybe just update the script a little bit. If we go back over to our SQL Server, if you log in, you should see we've now got this EpiServer SPA CMS. This has been created by the install script. And if you have a look in here and check the users, um, you can see that it's working properly because you know we've got a bunch of database tables. That is perfect, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Now, if we go to the website, This is the thing which is built. Obviously, we've got a bit of a compile problem, so we'll go back into Visual Studio. And then we'll load it up. So Visual Studio, and then we'll go to our foundation website. Open that up quickly. Hopefully, it shouldn't take too long. Our build has finally completed. We'll go back to the website and see what happens. Hopefully this should load up and we'll see a beautiful React EpiServer sample site. Now again, because my laptop runs a little bit slower, it's probably a good idea just to have a look in IIS. As you can see in IIS, hopefully, if we click refresh, you can see that we've got the EpiServer SPA and the SPA HTML. These again have been installed by the install scripts. So notice how traditionally with EpiServer you'd have one application pool. Um, now we have two websites. Annoyingly, we've got this Roslyn issue. Um, this happens from time to time. If you just Google it, you probably find this exact same article. So if we go back to Visual Studio within our package manager console, if we run the command, eventually loaded and the first thing we're presenting with is a licensing error now if you want to generate a license it's very quick all we need to do is just go into the episode license center within here you just go to the new partner or customer and then you fill out this form um, basically you just need to select episode 7 even though we're on a much later version of epi server then the way uh, it's configured. To get your um, bound input, I would suggest you use a MAC address. Um, again, to find your MAC address, you would just type in an ipconfig slash all. 
IP config slash all will give you this physical address thing where when it starts moving, hopefully. Um, so I can then copy that into my license file because I've already got a license file. If I go back into my code directory, you can see it here. And now if I just move it into the foundation website, which is going to be the source and where was the error again? I think it was uh, foundation license. So just in the web group. Hopefully, if we just do a refresh, our license should completely disappear. And as you can see, we've got our Epi server sample site up and running. If we try and view the editor, this should hopefully load. Now, if you're worrying or not sure about how to log in, we can go over here and obviously we can see that we've got this uh, user we can use, which is admin at example.com with a classic username of store. So let's go store. Hopefully this will allow us in. And then that's pretty much it for our installation. Perfect. Now, as this is loading, if we go to the CMS, we do not want to save that. Have a look around the CMS. Um, you can see that some of the Epi server products are installed. Um, you get stuff like the insights, I think, just so you can have a look around. My laptop is behaving very slowly, so I apologize for the delay. Um, generally, when you're using Epi server and if you're using a work laptop, things go much quicker than this. Uh, now, one of the interesting things, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to load the editor is that you can see that they have the inline editing working. Now, when you're building your SPA yourself, this is something that you should really be aware of and you should really think about it. Now, it's very sort of interesting uh, getting the inline editing to work. Now, if we go to the view here, they've even got block level previewing as far as I'm aware. And again, when you're working with React, it's these types of little details that you need to consider and when you're building the website again it's not sort of rocket science and these are things that you'll be able to do it's just these are some of the little tweaks and some of the nuances that you will have to think about when you're using react with epi server compared to using the traditional now the benefit of it is obviously the front end guys if you're using visual studio code you can build react um, you can have hot reloading and actually building an spa is much quicker and much easier if you like things like Cypress or Enzyme or Jest, obviously you've got like a um, full sort of test suite. Uh, you can do visual snapshots. So when you're checking in your code, you can see the visual distances. And being able to split up the sort of SPA and the traditional headless Epi server React website just makes deployment and sort of production builds a lot easier. Now, one of the things we could probably do is have a look at how the um, SPA talks back to Epi server. So if I go to the networking tab and then click refresh, what I'm hopefully doing if I filter by Ajax replies is I can see these requests. Now these are the requests which are going back to the Epi server content delivery API. As you can see here, we've got like the name of the page with a block ID with expand all. If we look at the response, you can see that we've got a load of information about the page coming back. And it's basically, this is how you create your SPA talking back to Epi server. You use Axios or, you know, Enfetch or one of those things. You talk to this content delivery API and then you build up web pages as you need to. Well, anyway, as you can see, this sort of gives you a very brief overview of how to install and get the sample site up and running. Now, if you actually go through the sample site, there is a heap of code to get your head around. And that's probably a bit too much for this one video. But the idea of this video is to probably get you thinking about React and Epi Server and just trying to get you up and running with it. As I said I've installed uh, a few Epi sites um, like this now, and the only thing that I've ever really had issue is with the SQL Manager and installing the SQL Database and stuff. I found it a little bit flaky, so again, if you have those problems, just go up to the setup um, file and potentially just you know manually update the bits and bobs to use your specific version. 
Um, apart from that, you should be good to go. Now, if you're really interested in EpiServer and you want to learn um, more about React and using it in a headless, go to my website. It's uh, johndjones.com. Over here, you can see a load of tutorials, um, a load of interesting things of how to get EpiServer to work with content delivery API and in a headless environment. If you want to become an absolute legend, um, obviously this is a YouTube video, please hit subscribe. If you hit subscribe, I will love you forever. I will call you a legend. It's probably the easiest way that you can be called a legend today. Um, if you've got some questions or a video that you'd like to see, uh, please email me or get in contact with me via the contact form up here. Um, it might take me a little while to do a video, but I generally do do most of the requests that I get. I'm happy to do anything to help people out. Again, uh, I hope you're having a great day. I strongly recommend that you have a look at React with EpiServer because it is really cool and I think it's a better way of architecting your website compared to maybe some of the older, um, very monolithic applications that I used to build. Anyway, hope you have a great day. Until next time.